Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this postmortem of my Blitz game number 749. I had uh, black and my opponent played d4. Went with the uh, Nimzo Indian this time, uh, or an attempt to get to the Nimzo Indian, and my opponent, fortunately for me, allows it. So he played c4. I went e6. He goes knight c3, allowing the Nimzo, and I play it. And now he plays uh, a3. This is the uh, same -ish variation. You see it's uh, well down on the list of of uh, popular moves. Uh, the top ones are e3, the Rubenstein variation, I play that. Uh, Queen c2, the classical variation, is uh, most often seen at top levels these days. Knight f3, the Kasparov variation, is an interesting way to play, and f3, just pawn to f3 is uh, another another interesting way to play. I don't, I don't see that too often myself, so I don't have much to say about that. But uh, I've faced all these others pretty regularly. But a3 is an interesting way to play. I should mention that um, Chess Explained plays the same-ish as well, but he actually plays e3 first and then plays a3 a few moves later. But we'll see it uh, transposes into one of the lines of the same-ish. So uh, let's just follow along. a3, how this game goes. So it, kicking the bishop, the bishop uh, takes. And uh, white takes back with the pawn. So um, black has given up the bishop pair, but inflicted some pawn damage. and. Um, this move c5, the top choice here, actually seems to equalize for black, so it doesn't um, does not lead to an advantage for white, which is why you don't see this played at the top level anymore, but um, or, or not often anyway. Um, but it does, uh, you know, it's still a dangerous weapon, and uh, you can look at uh, some of Chess Explains games to see why, uh, you know, um, white can get a, a pretty fierce attack going, and particularly if. Uh, you know, if black plays these typical moves of uh, knight to c6, pawn to b6, bishop to a6, with the idea of ganging up on this loose uh, c pawn, you know, the, the pieces are tied, uh, kind of tied up over here on the queen side, and uh, and white in the meantime, you know, gets an e4 and then gets some kind of um, attack going on the king side. So pretty interesting battle. And uh, yeah, the main line continues with e3 here, and so you can see how we could have transposed into this position if uh, if white had started with e3 and then played a3 later. Uh, let's see, and the main line continues. Yeah, let's follow the main line for a little bit. Um, castles, bishop d3, setting up for that kingside attack, knight c6, just normal development from black, knight e2, staying out of the way of the f-pawn. These pawns are going to roll forward, I guess, at the right moment. Uh, b6, preparing for uh, bishop development to b7 or a6, uh, and then pawn to e4. I think we can stop here. Um, but uh, anyway, yeah, it's an interesting position. The uh, knight e8 move <laughs> is uh, is the only move in the opening book at this point, although the chess engine likes the move uh, d6 in this position, which is probably more like what I would play. I don't know why. I would be moving my knight so quickly, but I guess the move uh, e5 is coming with tempo, and you're preparing to uh, defend the king side with a knight on e8. Anyway, leads to interesting play. Uh, let's see, uh, c5. Uh, he went queen c2 here, so we're just out of the. Uh, well, we're not out of the opening book, but uh, we're in a, a pretty much unpopulated area of the book. So, but queen c2 is. Um, Kind of in the spirit of the sameish, he's going to try and get in the e4 move in one in one go, not go e3 and then e4, but just go directly to e4. Let's see. I play knight c6. He goes bishop b2, and uh, I go d6, holding on to the center. And um, you know, I want to be able to play e5 in response to e4. And here's here we go. So he gets in that e4 move in one tempo. So uh, white has a lot of center influence but is a little behind in development. The king side is not developed at all. Only the queen and the bishop are developed. And um, as long as I can keep his pieces kind of uh, closed in with the move like e5, um, you know, black should be fine. And, and the chess engine actually prefers black in this position. Um, so best play here would be something to just, you know, white should just continue developing with bishop d3. There's no hurry to um, resolve the situation in the center. I mean, it looks like Black can win a pawn here because um, the knight supports the resulting pawn. But after the exchanges, the pawns that um, the pawns that black are left with are going to be these uh, double d pawns that uh, white can probably round up without too much trouble. So that's not nothing for white to worry about. Um, so bishop d3 developing, 
black castles and knight to e2 once again uh, while shoring up the center and and preparing to uh, push some more pawns on the king side um you know black is slightly better here but uh, you know it's in the range of about even and uh, white has some interesting attacking chances there um, he played d takes e5 i think this is just a mistake now when i take back now uh, this structure is going to be much harder to disrupt he doesn't have these pawns uh, helping out uh, I mean, he can play for f4, I guess, to try and bust things up that way. But um, but for the moment, I've held off his pieces by clogging up the center, and he's left with these uh, doubled c pawns, which are going to be weak in the long run. So so black is has a noticeable advantage at this point. Um, but anyway, he plays actively rook d1. I go queen e7, knight of three. He's finally finally getting those pieces developed, and I castle gets bishop e2. So. Both sides get all their pieces out. I get my bishop out to g4, and he castles. So pretty straightforward uh, so far. After castling, I decide to contest the default. I think the biggest potential advantage that white has in this position right now is that this control the default, but he can't, uh, can't hold on to it. He doesn't really control that file. Um, but I need to contest it. So uh, rook d8. He goes uh, bishop to c1, looking to route his bishop around. You know, his bishop is is not looking at anything on this diagonal but his own pieces. So I'm going to find a new diagonal for that bishop. Um, I go h6 to avoid the pen to my knight. He goes bishop e3, looking at my, uh, my c pawn over here. I defend it because I don't want my queen to have to be tied down defending that pawn. He plays h3, kicking my bishop. I drop back to h5 and uh, through all of this i've kept that advantage um but uh white is still you know in the game at this point uh, but knight h2 actually should lose <laughs> i uh, i didn't spot the idea here um but uh yeah if you want to take a take a look at this position what is what is uh what should black play here Okay, I'm going to uh, give the answer away now. If you want to think about it some more, pause the video. Um, the key to this position is that, um, well, it's black's move, and white's queen is overworked. The queen is defending the bishop, and it's defending the uh, pawn on e4, and he actually can't hold on to both of them. So bishop takes, queen takes, and, um, well, the engine suggests trading rooks first, but the main idea is uh, I can just grab this... Uh, pawn on e4 and there's no uh there's no clever clever tempo moves to take advantage of the loose knight uh for example if bishop bishop takes uh, h6 the knight can come over here to uh, c3 hitting the queen so um um yeah there's just nothing nothing for uh for white in this position uh, uh, black has just snagged a center pawn and uh, has an extra pawn as well as the better structure so uh so black is just uh, much better in this position. Anyway, um, the chess engine recommends giving up the pawn, actually, but in a different way. So with a more active knight, knight to h4, um, still allowing this sequence. But then the knight can come in here to f5, kicking the queen, queen f6. And, you know, the line continues from here. Um, it rates this as a playable position for white, but still with an advantage to black. But... Um, but after knight h2, I should just be winning with that idea of exchanging the rook and grabbing the pawn. I guess because uh, on top of winning material, also his knight is not so active as in that other line. Anyway, I didn't spot that idea. I just played uh, bishop back to g6, which is what I'd been thinking of anyway. I was kind of uh, piling up on that pawn. I didn't realize I could have just uh, won it tactically. So this move uh, gives him a chance to defend and well i still have some advantage in this position because of the better structure and his doubled c pawns but uh, it's not too exciting at this point let's see i go knight h5 i'm looking at some of these dark squares here uh, maybe hopping into g3 or f4 played bishop to f2 he didn't want my knight coming into um, g3 there and i play f5 and notice that uh, through all of this his knight went to h2 and it's just kind of staying there and it stays there for a long time and that constitutes uh, a lot of my advantage in the uh, in the game at this point is that you know in addition to the doubled pawns over here his his knight is really out of play 
Um, now there's there's one thing about this F5 move that I had overlooked, and it turned out uh, to work out okay. There was never a chance for uh, for White to get an advantage out of this, but I, I did miss the idea that uh, he could play G4 at some point and fork my two pieces after this exchange. But well, first of all, I take and it's a tempo on the queen. The chess engine recommends just uh, moving the queen to the side. Um, and then I could continue with a move like knight f4, you know, taking a look at this uh, bishop, which has uh, no squares. So, um, you know, I can force a trade of that bishop. I'm also looking at uh, maybe sacrificing over here if the circumstances are right. And I'm also just getting away from that uh, pawn to g4 fork. So this is all good for uh, black. Um, but that's the best play, keeping keeping an advantage with black still. He played queen to a4, which is uh, actually a mistake, but it's kind of a tricky move. You can see he's got the, he's moving the queen with tempo, hitting my knight, and the idea is if I pause to defend the knight, then he's going to play this uh, fork. It just doesn't uh, turn out so well for white because uh, at the same time this move, queen a4 that attacks my knight also leaves his bishop undefended, so I can take advantage of that and escape the fork. But, uh, well, I should have calculated this a little better ahead of time. I should have noticed that I was walking into this fork and had had this uh, prepared in advance. Instead, I had to find it on the fly. But, uh, well, it was there to be found. In fact, I could play knight f4 immediately, and uh, it's kind of interesting here. Knight f4, uh, if he takes, I take here of a check. I mean, the material is even, but um, let's see, it says bishop d3. But, uh, well, just look at the quality of the pieces, I guess that's the thing. Also the pawns. He still has this wrecked pawn structure on the queen side, but uh, mainly it's the activity of my pieces over here, and his pieces are kind of not doing anything. So cancel that. So that would be best play. So let's back up. Let's see. He went queen a4. And instead of, uh, I hadn't even spotted this fork idea or knight f4. I just noticed he was attacking my... Uh, my knight and I needed to defend it and then he played his uh, his pawn fork so I was pretty fortunate that I had a way of escaping here with knight f4 threatening to take that pawn with check now right here um, best play would be uh, to go ahead and take the bishop he takes my bishop I take his bishop now uh, let's see he has to move the king um, and I have to move my queen I can't actually take the pawn because of the He's still looking at my knight over here, so I would lose a piece if, uh, if he uh, grabs the, uh, if I grab the pawn. So I have to drop back. And uh, let's see, trading rex, this was the best line according to the chess engine for both sides. And then queen c2 and hitting my knight and knight back to f4. And what have we got here? Well, <laughs> now I have a wrecked pawn structure for white on the king side as well as on the queen side. So quite an advantage for black in this position. And once again, we see that uh, white's pieces are, are kind of out of play. So that would still be good for me, but um, that's, that was his best, best chance. Let's see, he played rook f to e1. And I went ahead and took out the bishop with check so that that bought me enough time to uh, save my bishop. I went uh, bishop to d3, hitting his rook. And uh, this also wins a pawn, so I come out of this uh, with excellent chances. Now, let's see, he played rook e to d2, trying to line up here. But fortunately, this rook is defended by the knight and the other rook, so um, there's no pin. And I can go ahead and grab this pawn, and now I'm finally uh, material up. And then he made his final mistake here, which was rook to d6. Let's see, best play to continue here would have been to exchange he can actually get a pawn back because by taking um, if he keeps taking if I take back with a rook he can keep taking it's going to drag my knight away and after the knight has uh, moved then the queen can grab the pawn on a7 so we get to this position this would have been best play from that point um, let's see bishop h4 and queen over to g6 um, so this is uh, not as clear uh, to me anyway, although the chess engine says black has still got a, a winning advantage here. I guess, uh, again, his pieces are a bit out of play. I have ideas of coming in here and attacking his king. This knight has uh, almost no moves. 
Um, so just, uh, but the material is even, so just a, a positional advantage for black, but a significant one should be, should be winning for black still. Um, and that would have been, that would have been, um, best play. Uh, instead he blundered with Rook to D6. It's, uh, maybe a tempting move at first, trying to distract my queen, but, uh, well, it's just not going to work out. I take, he takes, I take, and I keep my knight defended. I give up the bishop with check but um, at in this position I'm just up the exchange and he still has this problem with his uh, pieces not really actively participating in the game so uh, this is a winning position for black anyway after rook d6 he decided to resign so interesting game hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you again soon bye